Tonight I'm in John chapter number one, and I'd like to begin reading in verse number one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. To bear witness of the light. That all men through this light, through him, might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. I want to preach tonight, if I could borrow your imagination for just a couple of minutes. I want to preach on the subject, witnesses of the light. Three times in these short eight verses, the word witness is recited in the Bible. This is the same word where we get the word witness as in testifying in a court of law. Before I introduce the witnesses to you that bear record that Jesus is the light, there's several things I would like to tell you about each of them. These witnesses were present at the place during the time that the recorded events occurred. All of the witnesses are sworn to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Each testimony has been proven to be factual without the slightest fraction of exaggeration. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's enter the courtroom of God. As we enter the courtroom, the doors swing open wide as we gaze upon a crowded and energized congregation. We click quickly claim the first seats available in this crowded chamber. As we get our seat behind us immediately, we hear the sound of footsteps coming down the center aisle of the courtroom. As I turn around, I can't believe my eyes. It's Lucifer himself with a briefcase in his hand. He slithers to his place of prosecuting attorney along with his ugly demons and devils of hell. Once he takes his place, there's a few moments of silence that seems like an eternity. And from out of nowhere, a sweet-smelling aroma fills the room. Entering the chamber is Jesus himself, accompanied by the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. They too take their rightful places at the table of defense. Lucifer pulls out a thick file filled with accusations and charges to discredit the Son of God. From out of nowhere, somebody yells, All rise! And as all of us in the room rise to our feet, The sovereign God of the universe himself enters the judge's bench and is seated upon his throne. Now, the trial begins. Lucifer, would you please give your opening statement to the court? We are here to prove that the charged, Jesus Christ, is not the only and true light of the world. Word of God, would you like to give an opening statement about your defense? Your Honor... I have no opening statement. I will I will allow the witnesses before you today to declare our opening statement. And your honor, with no further delay, could I call the first witness to the stand? The side door opens up and steps through the door is a silver-haired man. He's clad with flamboyant attire. He gracefully approaches the witness stand and is seated alone. Sir, could you please state your name to me? You are here to declare that you're a witness of the light, this Jesus. He said, I am. My name is Father Time. Once he gave his name, I took a close look at his face, and I noticed that it was, it was pitted with the effects of many years of existence. Father Time, can you honestly tell us in this courtroom today that you are a witness of Jesus being the light? Yes, I can. Could you tell us how you saw Jesus as the light? I was there in the beginning. Uh, In the beginning? Yeah, I was there in the beginning. Long before this mud ball was ever thought of. Long before the first star was ever flung in the sky. Long before the sun ever shined its first ray. 
I was there in the beginning. I am Father Time. Father Time, could you tell us when you first saw the light? I remember setting out in the, in the eons of darkness. Out stepped the sovereign God, the Son of God, and the Holy Ghost. Stepped out on the edge of nothing in the middle of total darkness. And as he said the words from his lips, let there be light. And without hesitation, and without a vote, and without anybody else there, the sun began to shine. And for the first time, in the midst of absolute darkness, God sent the light. Great God Almighty, that's enough to make a Presbyterian shout. It was this same God that flung the stars from his fingertips, threw them out and quilted the darkened sky, and named every one of them. Oh, yes, you honor. I can gladly stand up and say, I saw the light. I'm Father Time, and I was in the beginning. Thank you, sir, for your testimony. The door opens up, and the second one comes in. This is an unusual fella. Oh, Jesus, help me. And as he enters the courtroom, people begin to snigger and whisper because he's dressed in a very unusual way. He's got on a camel's hair coat, a pair of leather breeches. He's got a locust in his hand and a jar of honey in his arm. And he goes to the stand and he sits down and they said, Sir, could you please tell how these people and the jury who you are? And he would say, Yes, I'm John the Baptist. John, could you honestly tell us in the midst of this congregation today, that you one time were in total darkness and saw this light. Oh yes, I remember the first time I saw the light. Could you tell me, John, when was the first time you saw the light? Was it in the beginning when you was with Father Time? Oh no, I wasn't there in the beginning. The first time I saw the light, I was in a belly. You were in a belly. Yeah, I wasn't there in the beginning. But mama had been carrying me for about six months. I was in the absolute darkness of my mama's womb. And Mary came to visit her cousin, my mama. And they stood belly to belly. And Mary said to Elizabeth, I've conceived of the Holy Ghost of God. And brother, there in my mother's womb, God showed me the light that his son was on the way. You know what the Bible said? The Bible said John leaped in his mother's womb. John did more shouting before he was born than most in a lifetime. Would you help me with this microphone, somebody please? Can you please get rid of this Methodist microphone and bless God get something that can take some preaching. Don't touch me there, that looks bad. I'm telling you, John said, I was in the belly of my mama and the Bible said he leaped in his mama's womb. If you look that up in the Greek, it means he jumped up her esophagus, grabbed his mama's earlobes and went, Woo! Hey, John was filled with the Holy Ghost before he was ever born. And when Mary said, I've conceived, John said, that's him. That's him. That's him. Yeah, I saw the light when I was in the belly. Lucifer, you're the prosecuting attorney. You have a thick file there. Do you have any questions for John? No, Your Honor. No questions for John. <laughs> the door opens up again. Here comes a lowly shepherd. His name's not even mentioned. You can tell immediately he's poor and he's working the night shift. Sir, are you ready to tell us in this congregation, in this jury, that you in the midst of darkness saw this light? Oh, yes, I remember it like yesterday. Could you tell me, shepherd, did you see it in the beginning? No, sir, I wasn't there. Did you see it in the belly? No, sir, I wasn't there. Could you tell me, shepherd boy, where did you see the light? I saw it in a barn. I, I saw it. I said I saw it in a barn. Some of you will get that in a little while. 
One night I was pulling the night shift out on the side of nowhere with a handful of sheep. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto me. And the glory of the Lord shone round about him. And he told me this day in the city of David, a Savior was born. I followed the light that night. And it led me to a little stable and a little barn. And there, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lied the only begotten virgin born. Let me say that again. He's the only begotten virgin born. Virgin born. He's the only begotten virgin born. Son of God. As a shepherd, at first I wondered why would God let his son be born in a barn. And then I realized as a shepherd, all lambs are born in a barn. Thank you, sir. You can step down. Lucifer, you have a thick file there. You've come with a lot of accusations to discredit Jesus. Do you have any cross-examining questions for the shepherd? He bowed his head and said, no, sir. There are no questions. Your Honor, could I call the next witness to the stand, please? In comes a man, pretty shabby, rough looking. You can tell he's had a rough life. You could tell he's been down the road. Sir, are you willing to testify before this congregation and this jury that you are a witness of this light in absolute darkness? Oh, yes, I would gladly tell. Excuse me, sir, were you there in the beginning when the light was shown? No, sir, I wasn't there. Could you tell me, sir, was you, was you in the valley with John when the light was No, I've never been there. Oh, I get it. You was in the barn when the light was shown and the Son of God was born. No, no, sir, I wasn't there. Where did you see light being manifested in total darkness? I saw it on a bloody hillside. Could you please tell the jury just exactly who you are? Sure. I'm the thief that was hanging on the cross. Thief, could you tell me exactly how it was that day? Oh, I'd be glad to. I remember I was hanging on the cross. No family member was there to beg my body. No relative was there to bury my carcass. I had been everywhere and done everything. My body's filled with tattoos. My life was filled with shame. I've had liquor on my breath, drugs in my body. Illegitimate children. I've been to every jailhouse in Jerusalem and the surrounding suburbs. I was a low down, dirty outcast. My family disowned me. Everybody was ashamed of me. I'm a vagabond. I'm a three time loser. I didn't have a change of clothes. I didn't have a dime to my name. Everybody had forsaken me. I was getting my just due reward and was going to hell and knew I deserved every minute of it. But from the sixth hour, Unto the ninth. Darkness filled the face of the earth. And while I was hanging there in absolute darkness, I gazed upon him that was on the middle cross. And I heard him say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I looked at him and said, Lord, Lord, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the light turned my way and said, Today, to, you're not getting this. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. You see, sir, I saw him on a bloody cross. Thank you, sir, for your testimony. We have another witness, Your Honor, that we would like to bring in. He's a little unusual, but we asked all the congregation to please be at ease. He's not here to make a visit. He's simply here to testify. The door swings open wide, and in walks an unusual character. He's in a black robe that goes all the way to the ground. He has a hood on his face. His face is as dark as a thousand midnights. 
Skeleton hands and feet protrude out of the arms and the base of the robe. He has a sickle in his hand. Everybody gasps for breath because it's him who all men fear. He walks up to the witness stand and sits down. Sir, could you please tell the audience your name? Yes, I'm Mr. Death. I did not want to come today, but I was subpoenaed by the Holy Ghost. I didn't want to show up today. But I was pulled into court by the Holy Ghost. Mr. Death, are you willing in the midst of this congregation and jury to give an honest testimony tonight? Yes, sir, I am. Mr. Death, could you tell me when you really saw the light penetrate the darkness? He bows his head and begins to mumble, excuse me, Mr. Death, would you please look up and speak into the microphone where everybody can hear you? I don't really want it. Mr. Death, you are under oath to tell us the truth. When did you see the light? Was it in the beginning? Was it in the belly of Elizabeth? No, sir. Uh, was it in the barn with a shepherd? No, sir, it wasn't there. Was it on a bloody hillside with a thief? No, sir, it, it wasn't there. Mr. Death, could you tell me when you saw the light penetrate absolute darkness? Yes, sir, it was in a borrowed tomb. A borrowed tomb? Would you mind elaborating just a little bit? Woo! Lord, this may not be helping you, but it sure is helping me. I'm glad our God's not dead. I'm glad He's alive and well. He's the living. He's the breathing. King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the light. Mr. Death, would you please tell us what happened that day? Yes, sir, if I have to. You see, I saw Jesus die on the cross. The devil came to me and said, Mr. Death, you've got to work overtime. We can't let him come up from the grave. As a matter of fact, Lucifer right there, he's the one that told me that I had to keep him in the grave. That prosecuting attorney, that lying sucker right there, he's the one that told me he was dead and gone and I didn't have to worry about him. He said the first day I hovered over that borrowed tomb, a stone was rolled over the mouth of it. It was darker than a thousand midnights. Not a ray of light anywhere. And for 24 hours, all is well. The devil came by and whispered through the rock, Death, how is it? He's not moved. I can't get in to see corruption. But he hadn't moved. I'll get him to deteriorate. Give me a little more time. Second day went by. Not a smudgeon of a move. Darker than a thousand midnights. The devil came by. That fellow right there, that prosecuting attorney, came by and said, how is it? I said, he hasn't moved the muscle. Have you got him to decay? I, I can't. What, what, what do you mean you can't? I don't know. I've never faced anybody like this before. But I can't get him to see corruption. I can't get him to see corruption. On that third and glorious day, Lucifer came by to ask me how it was. I don't know how it was. All I know is that I was in a darkened room. In came a wind from another world. Light permeated that darkened tomb. Something hit me on the head. And when I woke up, the stone was rolled away. The angels were sitting at the gate. And God had won the victory. And Jesus... Jesus had got up from the grave. Mr. Death. Mr. Death. In the presence of all the people in the jury, would you stand up please? Yes, sir. Mr. Death, I noticed you still have your silk black robe. Yes, sir. I've noticed you've still got that sickle in your hand. Yes, sir. I noticed you still have the skeleton feet and the skeleton hands and the darkened face. Y yes, sir. You have a beautiful key ring hanging on the side of that blackened robe. Oh, yes, I've had this for a long time. But I've noticed there's no keys.
I said I noticed. There's no keys. Mr. Death, could you tell me? Where's your keys? I, I don't know. I've been looking for them for 2,000 years. I've had metal detectors. I've hired all the demons of hell. I can't find my keys anywhere. I tell you what Jesus said. I am he that was alive and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I, I have got the keys of death and hell. Your Honor, we have one more witness. But it's going to be crowded in the courtroom if they all step in. But we'll try to get in as many as we can. The door swings open wide and to my amazement, there's you. And you were there. And I saw you come in too. And that lady crying, I seen you when you came in shouting that day. That fellow that used to be a drunkard, I saw you when you came in. Those crackheads and those meth snorters, I've seen you fellows come in. All of you that lived on the street and your home was in a mess. They walked around the edge of the courtroom. Mr. Lucifer, before we interview these, do you have any questions? No, Your Honor. Mr. Lucifer, you have a very thick file. And you have said absolutely nothing. <laughs> You sure there's nothing you would like to say? No, sir, Your Honor. All of you that are gathered around this courtroom and outside the courthouse, could you tell me, were you all in the beginning? No, sir. We weren't. Were, were some of you in the belly? No, Your Honor. We weren't. Well, then some of you, you had to be in the barn. No, Your Honor, we've, we've never been to the barn. Well, surely some of you were been to that bloody hillside where Jesus... No, sir. I've never been to Calvary by, in the flesh. Well, then maybe you walked by the borrowed tomb and you saw it. No, sir. I've never been there. Well, then could you tell me, when, when were you in darkness and saw the light? When I got born again. I said, when I got born again. I wasn't there in the beginning. I wasn't there in the belly. I wasn't there in the barn. I wasn't there on the bloody hillside. I wasn't there on the borrowed tomb. But I was there. I was there when he brought me out of darkness and saved my soul and changed my life. I was there. I was, uh, pray for me. These non-filtered cigarettes are killing me. <laughs> I was sitting outside my house some time ago, Dr. Carper, and it was dark outside, and I'd watch the spider draw a web up in the corner of a rafter on the outside of my home. And there's a fly flying around. And I thought, oh, buddy, you better be careful. That dude will get you if you ain't careful. And I can imagine if you'd have stopped that fly and said, Hey, fly, you worried about that spider web? Are you kidding me? I could fly through that thing. It'd never get a hold of me. It'd never snatch me. It would never be a snare to me. I could breeze right through that and never get caught up. You young people, that's exactly what the low-down devil will have you believe. You get the flying around sin. You may think you can blow through it. But it will get a hold of you and never let you go. About that time that stupid fly. Bam. Went into that web. He didn't think it was much when he got in it. Until he tried to get out of it. The more he fought. The more entangled he became. The more he tried. The more enslaved he became. And I sat there. Brother. Stephen, and I watched that spider come out. And I knew he had the venom. He was about to bite that fly 
inject that venom and take his prey. And I don't know why I did it. I just reached up there and watched that fly not able to deliver himself. I watched the enemy just about to get to him. And I reached up there and grabbed one of his wings. In the middle of the darkness, a hand from out of nowhere reached up and grabbed him. I pulled him out of that web. And I heard the spider say, I can't believe he got away from me. I blew all that entanglement off of him, threw him up in the air. Fly! Could you give us a word of testimony? I sure can. I got in something I couldn't get out of. The enemy was just about to take me under. I was filled with darkness and a hand from out of nowhere. I said a hand from out of nowhere came to where I was, pulled me out of the mess I was in, blew all my past off of me, and now I'm free. Hallelujah, I'm free. Now here's what the Bible said. Uh, excuse me, Lucifer, do you have any questions with these believers? No, Your Honor, I don't. He takes his thick file, puts it in the briefcase, slams it, and slithers out the back door. And as he goes out the back door, the verse came to my mind, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You know what that means? Let the redeemed of the Lord be a witness of that light. I wonder on a Friday night while the sun's going down, is there a witness in the house tonight that you were once lost, but now you're found? You were blind, but now you see? Why don't you stand up on your feet on a Friday night and lift your hands up in the air and let the low-down devil know we're a witness of the light. We were blind, but now we see. We were slaves, but now we are free. I'm glad I know I'm a witness of the light. Would there be somebody that said I'm not in a bar stool on Friday night. I'll raise my hand and say I'm in a church house instead of a bar stool. Is there somebody here that would say Jesus took a joint out of my hand and put a Bible in my arm. Would you lift your hand? Is there anybody here that had lost it all to sin, but God has picked you up and restored you and gave you everything you got? Would you lift your hand and say, glory to God, bless his name, hallelujah, he is worthy. He's worthy of all of our praise. I want to say this before they sing a song. Y'all can be seated if you can. If it's a Pentecostal church, we'd all be speaking in tongues. Some time ago, a preacher friend of mine went to visit a fella. He pulled up in the yard. He was standing there spraying a dog with a water hose. The dog was standing on its back feet, spinning around, acting like an idiot. He said, sir, why is that dog so excited? He said, well, the cover's off my septic tank. That stupid thing took off after a squirrel and fell in it. He said he was drowning in all that mess. He said, I went and looked over there, just that septic tank, and my father said to me, there ain't much to that dog. He ain't nothing but a mud anyway. But if you want him, you're going to have to go down there after him. He sure can't get out of that by himself. He said, I went back to the barn and got an old ladder and slid it down in that septic tank. He said, I crawled down in that filth and I reached out to grab him. And every time I'd reach out to grab him, he'd fight me, pushing me away. <coughs> Finally, got tired of fighting. When he got tired of fighting, I reached out and grabbed him. Some of y'all could get in tonight if you just quit fighting. He said, I grabbed that old mangy dog out of that septic tank. Crawled up out of that septic tank, set it on the ground, took a hose and sprayed it off. He said, dog, I not only loved you, I loved you enough to come to where you were. I loved you enough to pull you out of what you were in. I loved you enough to clean you up from everything you had been involved in. He said, preacher, I guess he's just excited because he got pulled up out of a pit and now he's been clean. 
Oh, the preacher said, I took off running around my car. And he said, sir, what you upset about? He said, I'll tell you why. Years ago, I was lost without God. I was in a pit and I couldn't get out. God said he's not much. But if you love him, you're going to have to go down to where he's at. And Jesus came and died on the cross. And he brought me up out of a horrible pit. Put my feet on a solid rock. And he cleaned me up from all the mess I was in. Bless his holy name. Sing it, man. Sing it. I'm God. Sing it, man. Oh, wonder of wonders as she looked on his face. That this little boy spoke the worlds in their place. The stars and the moon shining brightly on them. The earth and the sun were created by Him. The wonder of wonders, oh how could it be that God became flesh and was given for me. The Almighty came down and walked among He died for my sin. The wonder of wonders as she looked down and smiled. He was her maker as well as her child. He created the womb that had given him birth. He was God incarnate, come down to the earth. The wonder of wonders, oh how could it be that God became flesh and was given for me. The Almighty came down and walked among men the wonder of wonders he died for my sin let's stand together tonight while they sing another verse of this if you need to come and get saved you come if you need to come rededicate your life to Christ you come and maybe you just like to come and say, Lord, as I leave this tabernacle tonight, make me a better witness of that light. The world needs to see our light like never before. Sing another verse. I'm glad Jesus Christ is the wonder of wonders. Sing it. Come tonight if you need help. The wonder of wonders as she heard his small cry. That this voice had thundered on Mount Sinai. The small hand she held so Come on, if you need help tonight, be a witness of the light. Made a dry path through the mighty Red Sea. The, the wonder of wonders, oh how could it be? That God became flesh and was given for me. The Almighty came down and walked among men. The wonder of wonders, he died for my sin. The wonder of wonders. Come on tonight if you need oh, some help. How could it be Come on tonight if you need some help. God became flesh Thank and God was for the light for me. The Almighty came down and walked among men. The wonder of wonders, He died for my sin. The wonder. How many of you know that wonder? Wonders, that wonder named Jesus. Oh, how could it be? How could it be that God became flesh? Let him help you tonight. He'll lift your burden. He'll meet your need. The Almighty came. He'll set you free. And walked among men. The wonder of wonders. He died for my sin. The wonder.
wonder of wonders. Come meet him tonight. He'll be the wonder of your soul. Come and meet him tonight. That this voice had thundered on Mount Sinai. The small hand she held so tenderly had made a try. I'm glad today he saved your soul. Sarah boys, the wonder of wonders. Oh, how could it be that God became flesh and was given for me? The Almighty came down and walked among men. The wonder of wonders, He died for my. To this, oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch Nobody like Archie Watson. 
Thank the Lord for God's amazing grace. Glory! What a message. I don't know how we could have finished up the meeting any better than that. You can't improve on a message about Jesus Christ. Thank you for preaching that, my brother. I had a message something like that, but you'll never hear that one again. I'll tell you, I threw it away. I've thrown away every message I've got this week. I'm telling you, we've had some preaching. My soul. And he lifted up the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I think what blessed me so much is to watch you respond on that last point when he said, we wasn't in the beginning. We wasn't in the belly. Watch it. Watch it. We wasn't in the barn. We wasn't even at that bloody hill. But praise God, I'm glad we were there. Yeah! Come on, preacher, tell us about it. Old-fashioned old. Glory! Holy Ghost put us under conviction and introduced us to Jesus. That's exactly right, preacher man. And it did wonderful to be saved. I believe we ought to lift both hands and say, Praise the Lord! Yes, glory to God! Hallelujah! Well, glory! Well, glory! Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Over to my left tonight, you can get a CD of tonight's message. If you want to do that, and then at the bottom of the hill is our concession stand. And there are two weeks out of the year where hot dogs and hamburgers and nachos and chili won't hurt you. That's the two weeks of Greer Baptist Camp meeting. We got ice cream down there and all kind of stuff. We need to get all of that eat up tonight because it won't wait till next year. We did put up some slaw one time with some apple cider in it. People really enjoyed that a year or two later. In fact, Archie, we had more shouting after they ate it than they did before. But I'm not letting the inspirations leave these grounds until they do tear in that city. And when I wake up to sleep no more. We got to. And we love Brother Phil. Thank you, brother, for that message. Well, you just mind the Lord. I do. Give me some volume. They're going to sing these two songs while you're being seated. Please don't look at your watch. All you're going to do is go home and smoke and watch television. So just when I first got saved, my aunt and uncle made me listen to when I wake up to sleep no more. And they made me listen to it over and over and over. But I want to do something special. If I could, could I, could I get the ushers, Dr. Arthur, to help me? Are the ushers ready? Is that the best we got? That's the best I got. They say the uglier the usher, the bigger the offering, so this ought to be record-breaking tonight. Here's what I want to do. I'm giving $500 to the camp tonight. I know we've taken an offering for the expenses, and I, don't, I just want to be good to Dr. Arthur. I want to thank him for letting me come for this monumental celebration. Now, I'm giving a $500 love offering in memory of four men that influenced me under this tabernacle, and then another 100 for somebody that I want to honor that's still among us. First of all, I want to give $100 in memory of Dr. Billy Kelly that invested in me when I was just a 19-year-old boy and some of his family's here tonight. And Pastor, I'd like to recognize them if you all would stand up. Dr. Kelly's daughter and them are here and they brought their three-week-old baby to be with us. That's the Kelly family. I also want to give $100 in memory of Dr. Billy Canoy that taught me the Word of God every morning underneath this tabernacle. Yes, and Dr. Canoy's boys here, would you stand up, Brother Canoy? I want to do this in memory of the influence your daddy had on my life. Also, I don't know how I could ever repay the man that really trusted me when he had every right not to, and that's Dr. Harold B. Seitler, the hero of faith. My mentor, he trained me, loved me, was patient with me. And Dr. Carper, I know you're here. Is anybody else here from the Seitler family? My mother is right back there. Is Miss Carper here? I didn't see her. Where are you? There you are. That's Dr. Seitler's daughter, and this is her grandson. I'm going to give $100 in memory of your sweet daddy, Miss Carper. Thank you. You could be seated. Great grandson. 
My son is here. Logan. Is your great grandson here? here? Where is he at? Where's that great grandson? Stand up, Logan, with that grandson. Where are you at with that boy? God bless you, brother. We're glad you all are here. Your great grandfather invested in me when I was just a teenage boy and really changed my life. The other is Dr. Mays Jackson. All these men taught me different things. Dr. Billy Kelly taught me to laugh every chance you get because you'll cry enough to make up for it. Dr. Billy Canoy taught me you can preach the word of God in depth and not be dry. Dr. Harold B. Seitler taught me if you'll preach everything straight from the Bible, you'll never have to apologize. Dr. Mays Jackson taught me how to take just something familiar in life and use it for an illustration that'll drive home a spiritual point. I want to give $100 in memory of all of them, but I want to give $100 in honor of Dr. Joe Arthur and his wife for 20 faithful years of serving here. I have never heard him downgrade any of the men that I just spoke of. He has loved them, honored their memory, quotes them all the time as I do as well. We could never replace those men. We just cherish the fact that we got to know them. I want these young people to have the same memories that we have here. I was here when Dr. Seitler preached the four hallelujahs. I climbed that third pole from the back that night. I was here when he preached handfuls on purpose. I was here when he preached on Mephibosheth, the grace of God. Amen. This place was nuts. And I want this next generation. This is a memorial offering. I know you've already given. I understand that. But would you just help me be good to this man? When these facilities open up next year, there may be three air conditioners broke. Another roof may be blown off. You don't know, what, you don't know what's going to happen in a year's time. And I don't want him to go worried about having enough money to pay all the bills. He's not said a word to me. As a matter of fact, I've asked him for this liberty. They're going to sing these couple of songs in just a minute. Would everybody reach in your pocket and do something? I don't care if it's a dollar bill. Would everybody do something? Look at this crowd, all the way to the back, setting all the way out. If you don't have any money, ask your wife. I promise you, she's got some he money in her pocket. That's money he don't know about. I promise you, your wife has got some money. I want everybody to put something in the offering. We take food stamps, cheese, hubcaps, and by the way, if you don't have any money, I have a pair of pliers, we'll take your cap teeth. We'll do everything we possibly can. Would you promise me in memory of these men and in honor of this man that you'll give something? If everybody will give something, then this could be an extra blessing of anything that might come up that's unexpected. Father, bless the offering. We can't thank you enough for what you've done for us. Lord, this is Friday night. A lot of us would be in a beer joint blowing our whole paycheck if it wasn't for Jesus. We'd be sitting somewhere with a cracked pipe or a needle up our vein, sitting on a bar stool in a place we shouldn't be. But tonight we're in church. And Lord, as we take up this memorial offering in memory of these men, help everybody to do something, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hit it, Thank Luke. you, brother. Hit it. Let's do it.